Imagine a scene where a massive thousand pound bull is charging full speed in your direction. You're alone and unharmed in the middle of the bull ring, but rather than seeking a place to run and hide, you halt this beast in its ominous horns moments before it has a chance to reach you. In a literal flip of a switch, you turn this animal away. This was an actual real life scenario in 1965 where one of the early looks into brain implants began. In a death-defying performance, neuroscientist Jose Delgado played Matador to prove that he could change a bull's violent behavior through a radio-controlled implant in the bull's brain. In his research, Delgado sought to use neurotechnology to create a less cruel, happier, and better man. He aimed to achieve this mind control through deep brain stimulation, Deep brain stimulation is a neurosurgical procedure in which deeply implanted electrodes send electrical impulses in order to control specific brain activity. His goal of conquering the mind through invasive procedures ignited public fear. Delgado's experiments of inducing anger, affection, pleasure, and other emotions through a push of a button and a goal to create a psycho-civilized society had implications of collective mind control. During this time where lobotomies were allowed from the 40s to 60s, neurosurgery pushed ethical and hazardous boundaries, giving the research and practice a dark reputation. Thus, the advancements of deep brain stimulations had setbacks from this public disapproval. Although his controversy curtailed this line of research for a few decades, his belief of shifting from the proverb, know thyself, to construct thyself, can be seen today in safer, more sophisticated technologies such as the Neuralink. Developments to advance human abilities continue for cutting-edge biomedical technologies, so far for improving hearing and vision, physical constraints, neurological disorders, mental diseases, and next, Sinking with artificial intelligence. We're living in a world where becoming transhuman is a reality. Transhuman is having powers and abilities beyond those of standard humans through modification. A concept seen in science fiction is now an anticipated future. This April, Neuralink posted a YouTube video revealing a monkey playing a computer game telepathically. This nine-year-old monkey, named Pager, had two neural link devices put on each side of his brain that made this possible. Neuralink's technology implant, called Link, will allow users to utilize their brains to operate computers. This brain chip, at the size of a soda bottle cap, is meant to function as a brain-machine interface, BMI, a direct communication pathway between the enhanced brain and an external computer device like a smartphone. Through the Neuralink implant, Pager the monkey learned how to telepathically move a cursor to targets on a screen in exchange for a banana smoothie that was served through a straw. To make this happen, the link was inserted into the motor cortex of the monkey's brain, the area of the brain that coordinates hand and arm movements. This implant includes over a thousand tiny electrodes connected to the brain, allowing it to record and decode electrical signals from the brain. Although brain-machine interfacing is remarkable, this isn't the first time we've seen an example of it where a monkey's brain has been enhanced to demonstrate moving a cursor through mind control. In fact, research and findings in bioelectricity and neural interface have a long, long history, including in 1964, when American neuroscientist Ebert Fetz was a postdoctoral researcher, he taught a monkey to control the needle of a meter using only its mind. In the 1970s, in Jack Vidal research of computer-generated stimulation and signal processing demonstrated that humans could control the movement of a cursor through a two-dimensional maze through EEG technology. Additionally, BCI accomplishments not only aim to improve the lives of those with neurological disorders, such as epilepsy and Parkinson's disease, but also physical disabilities. 
A few of these notable BCIs include the cochlear implant that provides a sense of sound for hearing impaired, brain gate cybernetic limbs, and their mind control robots for people who are paralyzed, and the Argus retinal implants to provide people with sight loss a form of vision. There are other examples of brain computer interface accomplishments that have demonstrated what Pager the monkey has done, moving a cursor on a computer through the mind. So how does this make Neuralink any different? Although there are skepticisms on how the link implant is a new breakthrough, there are significant medical, scientific, and engineering specifications to take into account in order to truly understand the path in which Neuralink is headed. Let's take a look at what Neuralink has done so far, their short and long-term goals, and how they plan to administer this neurotechnology. In 2011, Neuralink was a startup company working on a brain chip to treat traumatic brain injuries and had a prototype by 2013. However, in 2015, the two owners struggled to sustain the company financially, so they accepted a buyer's proposal to buy the trademark. After the deal was made, the buyer was revealed to be Elon Musk. Neuralink was then founded in 2016 with aims to implant wireless brain computer chips to help cure neurological conditions like Alzheimer's, dementia, and spinal cord injuries, and fuse humankind with artificial intelligence. Like most BCIs, Neuralink is focused on healthcare benefits, yet also intends to link our brains to AI. In a 2019 livestream, Neuralink had a product launch event for their first version of their BCI, or Neuralace, called the N1 sensor. In this product reveal, the N1 sensor design was depicted with four implanted sensors with 3,072 electrodes, connected through very small wires tunneled under the scalp to an external device that's placed behind the ear, called the link. The link is Bluetooth and battery operated and can be controlled through an iPhone app. If the link is disconnected, then the brain implant is disabled. In this reveal, co-founder Elon Musk said, the reason for Neuralink is to understand and treat brain disorders and to also provide the option to preserve and enhance your own brain. Mentioned intentions to improve health through the implant include to provide the perception of visual stimulation to a blind person, provide touch feedback to help someone operate a prosthetic device, decode speech intentions, and synthesize speech, allow a paralyzed person to control avatars or assisted robotic devices, and treat depression, insomnia, anxiety, and addiction. Some of these efforts have already been achieved before by other BCIs, but not all together in one device. Additionally, Musk said that the Neuralink also wants to create a well-aligned future by merging our brains with artificial intelligence. This goal alone, by comparison, sets the Neuralink mission beyond apart from all other BCIs. Summer of 2020, Neuralink modified the design of the implant by simplifying the device to one part that is the size of a large coin with an all-day battery life. Along with this announcement, Neuralink presented their surgical robot. Neuralink developed, in collaboration with Woke Studio, a robotic system to implant the threads into the brain at a rate of six per minute. Musk states that the intent of this robot is to perform the entire procedure, from the incision to cutting the skull, inserting electrodes, placing the device, and closing up the incision site and that the robot has exact precision avoiding blood vessels, minimizing any inflammatory response and bleeding. Musk said, this surgery is minimally invasive and lasts under an hour. Along with the surgery robot, test subjects were also revealed at this event. We saw Gertrude, a pig outfitted with the link, showcased for a live demo. The link had been implanted two months prior in an area of the brain linked to her snout, 
because that's where pigs have a lot of nerve endings and brain processing power. Must compare the device to having a Fitbit for your own brain. Although Musk seemed more interested in the path to making the link a consumer-facing device for humans, Gertrude displayed possibilities from an agricultural perspective. If the implants were cost-effective and easy to install, it could potentially improve animal welfare and health by providing a technology that precisely translates what livestock are thinking and feeling. The latest that Neuralink has shared so far were the advances in Pager the monkey. So although we've already seen test subjects move a cursor with their thoughts, it's the packaging density and scalability that's setting Neuralink's implant far apart so far. With this Neuralace implanted, the link will provide those with disabilities the ability to control computers with their thoughts and to those with no disabilities as well. See, Neuralink aims to advance the abilities of able and healthy humans, not just those with paralysis or neurological disorders, who wish to merge their biological intelligence with artificial intelligence. Anyone with this wireless Neuralink implant will be enabled to directly use their neural activity to operate computers and mobile devices rapidly and easily. In a tweet from Elon Musk, he states that the first Neuralink product will enable someone with paralysis to use a smartphone with their mind faster than someone using their thumbs. Timescales for each purpose will be different. The plan for their first human clinical trial will be focused on patients with quadriplegia and is expected to happen in the next year or so. The long-term goal for Link is to become available to people without disabilities in 10 years, providing anyone with the option to become symbiotic with AI. Technically, the Neuralink mission is different in that it plans to be an inconspicuous high-bandwidth wireless implant using minuscule probes that can record from and selectively stimulate as many neurons as possible across diverse brain areas. According to Neuralink, the goal of using this Neuralace technology is to immensely increase the number of neurons you can read from and write to in a safe, long-lasting way. At each stage, produce devices that serve critical, unmet medical needs of patients and make surgery as simple and automated as LASIK, where patients will be placed under conscious sedation and local anesthesia. By comparison, designs used for Parkinson's today only use 10 electrodes, but the link chip uses 1,024 electrodes. The size of the chip is also a contrast, coming up 4 millimeters that sits in a hermetic casing measuring at 8 millimeters wide by 1 fourth of a millimeter tall. Unlike the brain implant used in Parkinson's disease patients, the Neuralink will not require an implanted pacemaker and can be controlled via Bluetooth. And unlike the Utah Array, surgery is less damaging, is not prone to infections, and will not be externally visible, completely flush with the skull. Neuralink's flexible threads, with wires thinner than human hair, set another advantage over current BCIs. The Neuralace is less likely to damage the brain than the rigid spikes currently used in BrainGate, a BCI used today for quadriplegics. Because the brain shifts in the skull, it's safer and more effective to use thin and flexible electrodes, like the Neuralink has, as opposed to stiff needles, like in the Utah Array, they can lead to brain damage. The size and magnitude of the Neuralink's electrodes not only reduce the chances of hurting the brain, but also allows for a much higher volume of data to be collected, amplified, and transferred, and the possibility to send an increase of signals to the brain to help in the treatment of several brain disorders. In terms of scalability, 
the robot surgeon puts Neuralink a notch above other BCIs if you look at risk and duration alone. According to Neuralink's white paper, the neurosurgical robot is capable of inserting six threads, 192 electrodes per minute. Each thread can be individually inserted into the brain with micron precision for avoidance of surface vasculature and targeting specific brain regions. The surgical robot alone can make the incision, dilate it, stitch the probes in, place the implant, then glue shut while the patient is under local anesthesia. Considering how tiny the probes are, it would be impossible to insert by hand. The automation of this robot can perform the outpatient surgery in less than an hour with no noticeable damage to the brain, making it possible for patients to leave the hospital in the same day. Neuralink's short-term goal is to improve muscle issues affecting the brain. However, the long-term goal is to augment the human brain to keep up with artificial intelligence. Musk believes that AI is the greatest potential threat to humanity. He said, quote, I think this is going to be something really important at a civilization scale level. I've said a lot about AI over the years, but I think even in a benign AI scenario, we will be left behind, end quote. With that being said, the public fear of brain implants that was ignited back in Delgado's remote control bull days lingers on even today. In a recent survey conducted by the Pew's Research Center, 69% expressed more worry than enthusiasm at having a brain chip implant for improved cognitive abilities, and 66% said they would not want enhancements of their brain at all. Moreover, half of those surveyed felt that the recipients of brain enhancements would feel more confident about themselves. Part human, part robot, would you be willing to upgrade your body with technology? Would you augment yourself like a machine if you could work smarter, be stronger, or simply live longer? Let us know in the comment section below. Hit the thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.